Right, so we're in Sheffield. It's yeah. a Yorkshire special. That is a Yorkshire ass accent as well. <laughs> Fucking, I'm gonna have to turn up my Yorkshire today. And obviously, we're talking about football, there's only one thing we can drink, and that's fucking Tetley's Seagull Pal. Oh yes. God, people might finally get to hear my natural accent in this one. Wouldn't that be fun? Oh, oh God. <laughs> Zlatan Ibrahimovic, or Zlatan Ibrahimovic with the little funny C with the accent over it, if you know how to tie that on your keyboard, which I don't, um, is regarded as one of the finest football players alive today. He's also regarded as an arrogant cock puffin, which would only be bad if he wasn't such a hilarious asshole about it. So I'm guessing, mate, you have got a lot of Zlatan Ibrahimovic just like goals and moments just in your head right now. Yeah. And fuck it, it's going to get us demonetised immediately because they co <laughs> football just copyrights everything. Just so, just name what is your favourite Zlatan Ibrahimovic goal to establish how fucking good this guy is for the people. I think it would be when he played England and he was 35 yards out and just thought. Yeah, overhead kick. Fuck it, overhead kick. God, he's such an asshole, that's so good. People watching at home might be thinking, why is this impressive? Um, imagine just being able to kick a small ball of air into like, what would be a reasonably small target from 35 yards away, upside down as 11 large men try to stop it going into the net. Do you remember what he did after that goal? Because he was asked, Zlatan, how did you score that goal? Didn't he insult the goalkeeper? <laughs> yeah, he said the goalkeeper was shit. We need to establish straight away this guy is an asshole, but he is also one of the most naturally talented players alive today, as evidenced by the fact he gets paid millions of dollars a year to kick a fucking ball around a pitch. I feel like I'm in the pub. <laughs> well, that's the thing. That's what this channel is supposed to be. It was inspired by it's two guys having a conversation in a pub, but the conversation they're having is fact-checked, which is always fun. So is any oh, like, it's like Zlatan moments you think to establish him as the asshole I have described him as? I think it would just be that famous interview where the interviewer asks, what did you get your girlfriend for a birthday? <laughs> oh, man, yeah, this does it. Go on. Tell the audience, what did he say? He said, she already has Zlatan. She doesn't need anything else. Oh like, Zlatan's interviews are legendary. I think one of my favourites is at a press conference and he was asked by a female reporter, Zlatan, would you like to comment on the rumour that you are gay? And he said, why don't you and your sister join me in my hotel room and we'll figure out how true that is. It's like, <laughs> it's a dick thing to say. You kind of have to respect it. Like a man having just that much confidence and the skill to back it up. That's what always gets me. He, all, he shit talks so many other players on it all the time. Yeah. On Twitter, like, oh, what do you think of this player? He's shit. He's not Zlatan. <laughs> so Zlatan's quite vocal on Twitter. Uh, Follow him on Twitter is amazing. <laughs> and uh, he said, someone asked him, um, what's the formula to scoring a goal? Yeah, and you'd think one of the foremost football players on the planet would not have time to respond to such a stupid, inane tweet. But no, Zlatan loves sharing knowledge about football and was very happy to share with this fan this actual flow chart I hope that he made on MS Paint about how to score a goal. And I've got it in front of me now. I'm going to read the entire thing because it's so fucking good. Do you remember it? I remember the end. <laughs> the start is, should I score an amazing goal? Which goes to, of course. Should it be an overhead kick? Most definitely. Will it go in? It already has. Dare to Zlatan. <laughs> hashtag Dare to Zlatan is an, a, a, a hashtag he launched during what I think is one of my favourite moments on Twitter, where he said, all tomorrow, Zlatan will be doing Q&A. Twitter, can I please have 141 characters? Because <laughs> Zlatan needs more to answer the questions. And I don't know for sure, did he get the 141? I can imagine someone just looked to it, that's Zlatan, yeah. yes, have well, the extra. Uh, he asked for more characters for that day, and he was just asked a, an array of questions about football, how to get better at football. Um, so would you like to hear some pearls of wisdom? I'll be reminded of some pearls of wisdom that Zlatan dropped that day. Daring to Zlatan is easy. Start by trying moves that can't be done. Keep trying until you are Zlatan. <laughs> Just transform. <laughs> what a legendary asshole. But it gets better. We've got another one here. A wise man once said, surprising your opponent is the, cr is the key to surprising them. That wise man was Zlatan. Hashtag dare to Zlatan. <laughs> Which makes no fucking sense. Adam, discuss. Just discuss now the concept of daring to Zlatan. <laughs> Because 
this is an actual thing he tried to launch, didn't he? Yeah. And do you remember what like, the, the, the whole idea behind it is? To be like the best. Yeah, be Zlatan. Yeah. You've got to do like the height of this. Dare to Zlatan is just try something obnoxiously, hilariously awesome and then do it because you are Zlatan. Because yeah. if you, Zlatan tried it, Zlatan would do it. And we are saying the word Zlatan a lot, and you may have noticed from some of those quotes just read out. He likes referring to himself as Latan, and he's noted for his constant use of, you know, referencing himself in the third person. That's because he's seen to it that the term to Zlatan has been trademarked in his native Sweden. And so only he can use it in regards to advertisements for sporting products. Is it just sport? It, just that's it? the thing, yeah, because he realistically could have gotten a more, like, you know, comprehensive trademark that would allow him to aggressively pursue and then sue the shit out of anyone using that term in regards to other things. But Zlatan knew that, you know, impeding the Zlataning of others would be a very un-Zlatan thing to do. <laughs> but Zlatan understands that people want to Zlatan in their day-to-day -day life, and they can't do that. They're constantly worried about getting sued because suing someone is not a very Zlatan thing to do. Scoring an overhead kick on them for 35 yards and then trying to choke them out absolutely is. <laughs> Do you remember when he did that? <laughs> he tried to choke a goalkeeper. That was quite recent. <laughs> Before we move on to like more Zlatan stuff, like, do you have any personal favourite quotes from footballers? Because they drop some absolute fucking pearls sometimes. And we're going to start with my favourite quote from a footballer which is from Wayne Rooney. It's about my hometown, which I'm not very proud of, but it's Scunthorpe. <laughs> and one time when Wayne Rooney was playing for Manchester United, Manchester United got drawn to play against Scunthorpe United. And someone asked Wayne Rooney, Wayne, are you looking forward to playing Scunthorpe United next week? And he just went into the microphone and went, I didn't know B&Q made stadiums. And it's like, oh, it's so good. Have you got any like that? I think it just has to be that Peter Crouch one, quite well known. Yeah. There it is, yeah. When uh, he got asked, you know, what would you be if you weren't a footballer? He just turned just went, a virgin. A virgin. <laughs> <laughs> so good. I want to mention, though, another Wayne Rooney one, because this is great. Right? I think one time on Twitter he put out, people don't appreciate how hard it is to be a footballer. Like when you've got to wake up at 6am every day and eat three bowls of pasta. And the first response to this tweet was, Wayne... For what you get paid a week, I'd shove it up my fucking ass, mate. <laughs> so before we move on, have you ever heard why Zlatan ended up like trademarking the term to Zlatan and like hashtag dare to Zlatan? No. It's because a TV show in France coined the term to Zlatan in reference to doing something so outlandishly ballsy and with such supreme confidence. The only point of reference they had was Zlatan Ibrahimovic. And he loved it so much, I'm trademarking that shit immediately. Because <laughs> to Zlatan is too fucking good. And if you didn't think his ego could get any bigger, like the, if the sound of his head scraping against the size of doors as he walked in them wasn't loud enough, the Swedish dictionary added his name to it for Zlatan era, which roughly translates to, in English, dominate. <laughs> His name is literally a synonym for domination. <laughs> so Zlatan does have a bit of a reputation for being a bit of a legendary dick. Yes, like the most legendary of penises, like, but I don't think Zlatan minds that because as we mentioned, like, he can back up every single piece of shit he's ever talked, as evidenced by the fact he's just so good and his name is in the Swedish dictionary as a synonym for domination. And do you just have, before we close up, any personal just favourite Zlatan moments on and off the pitch? I think the, um, one of his teammates was getting, like, you know, being interviewed in a report, and then Zlatan <laughs> just walked behind him and kicked him in the head. <laughs> And this guy's six foot, six foot hard. And Zlatan reached him, kicked him in the head, and just walked off. Oh, okay then. Fair enough. I thought you were going to start a funny quote. I know he just booted, he just donkey kicked someone in the back of the head for a laugh. Yeah, while he was being interviewed. While he was being interviewed, man. I think mine is when he got so tired of the shit questions he was being asked during a press conference. He interviewed himself and answered all the questions in the third person as like sarcastically as possible while also talking about how bad the goalkeeper who let his goal in was. <laughs> oh man, but well, yeah, anyone out there? And you're thinking, I ain't got the confidence today. Just think, what would Zlatan do? And the answer usually is score a phenomenal goal and act like a huge penis about it. So people may have noticed throughout this video that you have a distinctive twang to your voice and you are 
very, very much a Yorkshireman. Is that correct? Uh, yep. That is born and bred in but, Sheffield. <laughs> and I have been asked many, many times, Carl, can you please speak in your native accent, which only comes out when I'm speaking to another Yorkshireman with a drink. So we can now do that in house. Are there any sayings that you think just sums up Yorkshire as a place? Because I think there's a couple for me. I think um, Giorwi Sen is my favourite, when uh, which means give over with yourself. And I love how much it's basically when you have it written out, it's got so many fucking apostrophes for all the letters that I'm missing. So I remember an ex-girlfriend of mine from down south had a Yorkshire translation chart on her wall, and I came over and said, "How do you pronounce this?" And it's Gior with his M written down, but it looks like it looks like Welsh. Yeah. When it's written down like phonetically, I went, "Oh, it's Gior with his M." What does that mean? It means Gior. It means Gior. What do you mean Gior? It means Gior. What else can it mean? It means give over. What does give over mean? It means Gior, doesn't it? So any like Yorkshireisms that you quite like that people might not understand? The word that I always say that no one understands is general. Oh, yeah. general. Going up general. Oh, I think I don't use general. I use um, snicket. Snicket. Snicket's yeah. the one for me because that was like specific to the area I lived in in Pontefract. What about if you're running really fast? What did you What do you say? Because I said bez in it. Bollock in it. Bollock. <laughs> Fucking bollock. What about when it's raining? Pissing it down. Pissing it down. Oh, I do have a pissing it down. I think for us it's bouncing it down. Yeah. It's fucking bouncing it down out there, lads. When I'm talking to my dad, he goes, Carl, don't get a fucking moan, Johnson. Or daft lad. Daft lad. It's like, so let's try and combine all these now. So to create the most Yorkshire sentence ever, that would be, you're with a send daft lad, you've got a moan, John. Run down, (laughs) snick it while it's bouncing it down and get me fish and chips. And a tetlis. And a tetlis. There it is. Go over this and daft lad, stop it with monk on, head down through Ginnell and get me a fish and chips and a tetlis. And people wonder why I don't speak like that in videos all the fucking time. It's, <laughs> it's almost incomprehensible, but I understand it. So for anyone who's asked before, that is what I will sound like six more tetlis in if we kept speaking. Were there any words or phrases that you just particularly enjoy saying just for the confusion they elicit in others, thanks to your accent? I think when I was in America, literally, they didn't understand my name. They didn't understand your name? No, I got Adam, and I got called Eddie. <laughs> what? That was to me all the time. <laughs> What's your name? It's Carl. Kyle. Carl. Kyle. Yeah, that'll do. So the thing is, my dad is way worse than I am, because he, he works in Doncaster. Oh, dear. So you don't give a fuck, and his accent is so strong, and he calls me up on the phone, and it's like, hey, up, son, how's it going? I, th- I think the definition of Yorkshire is that we just don't say the... It's to, to yeah. or we just miss it all together. Yeah. Good to shop. Yeah, good to shop. Good to shop and get a can of tetlis. Yeah. Um, what's the, it's the Michael McIntyre joke, innit? It's like, tit lion, tit witch, tit wardrobe. Or like the band, the thers. She's like, the tit tits. <laughs> so I listened to tit tits and then read tit lion, tit witch, tit wardrobe. Oh man, I can feel that idea. See it, see it me. See it me so strong. Thank you for this, this tetlis. The thing is, as well, the word tetlis is so fucking, <laughs> you can't say it. So we need to, I think, what we're going to do is we're going to give everyone at home a little bit of homework right now. And it's, we're going to teach them how to pronounce one word particularly that Yorkshire people love. And that word is corn beef ash. Corn beef ash. Corn yeah. beef ash. And how do you say corn beef for a start? It's supposed to be corn beef. It's supposed to be corn beef. No, if you're Yorkshire, it's corn beef. Yeah, corn and beef. Do, and it's hash, but you, you don't pronounce that fucking... If you're from Yorkshire, you do not pronounce that fucking H. H does not exist in our language. So what it is? It's corn beef ash. Ash, that A. Hey, this is your homework, folks. This is what you're doing. If you're not convincing the Yorkshire, you've got to order your corned beef ash. 